and welcome back to the hair show. I'm Dom Lahane and I think are we now on episode three. So great, we've all been just sitting here watching your comments coming in. So guys, keep them comments coming in. We are so excited to be here again sharing this live online magazine show. And as I say, we are bringing you this every Monday. So so many names, people we recognize coming in. So for the next hour or so, you are in for a treat. And remember, give us plenty of likes, give us love, share the show, because as I always say every Monday, that this is your show. It's the hairdresser's show. So we want to get your comments, get your questions coming in, get your likes. We see them all. And as I say, just a reminder, there is a little bit, about a 20 second delay. So sometimes you may be thinking, they're a bit slow answering our questions. Well, that is the reason why. And also, I think this is really special tonight. Do you know why? Because I think we're on YouTube. So if you're there on YouTube, get some comments coming in, the How To Cut It YouTube channel as well. And I'm hoping we may be on LinkedIn too. So if you're there, it'd be great. But I know we're there in the Facebook How To Cut It page. So big hello to you all. And yeah, plenty of love coming in. So shall we go on to what is coming up in tonight's show? So here we go. Let's have a little peep of what's coming your way. So we are going to be kicking off tonight with something that you're all getting very used to, and that is the World Hair News. And this is where Giordana Cabela comes onto the show and she's going to share with you her latest news stories that she's been picking out over the last week or so. Then we have tonight Rock Up and Share, and this is where we showcase brilliant hairdressers. And we've got Daniel Granger and Brooke Evans coming on for this something else that I know you all love. Brecky with Bell. I'm seeing all the love coming in for Georgia. So Georgia is going to be sharing that, our resident agony aunt guru. Then we have Hairdressers Open Talk, and this is where we really go into hot talks in the industry, and we are going to have Lisa Maynard at him, and she is going to be having a conversation that's going to grab all our attention. It's one that we need to talk about. Then we're going to lighten things up because we have a chance for you all to win a hamper of In Your Looks products worth, it says £157 there, sorry, it's £97. Then, saying I'm very, very excited about sharing with you, Masters at Work, Paul Stafford. He is going to be talking one of his most iconic haircuts with you. He's filmed this brilliantly for you, and I've seen this video. It is special. And then we have much, much more coming up. Going to have chat, but most of all, keep your comments coming in because I'm going to pull them in. We're going to keep those things coming in all the way. So let's bring on my two fellow lovely hosts who join me every Monday. So let's see some love hearts as I welcome to the show Jordana Cabela and George Bell. There you both are. How are you? Hi. How's Good. things How are you? So let's just have a look. We've got some great stuff coming in tonight. I've already just seen here from uh, Daryl. Yes, Paul Stafford. So yeah, great stuff. But Come on, what's been going on in your world, George, over the last week since last Monday? Oh, do you know what, mate? I've been so busy. So we've been doing a huge rebrand and a refurb for the salon, um, and it's taken all my time, but we are super excited about it. I think, you know, lockdown has given us a chance to sort of take a step back and realise what we need to do. And, yeah, I've been... I actually don't even know what I'm going to do when we come back to work. Because I've been that busy outside of work, I'm just not sure what what we're going to do afterwards, to be honest. But, yeah, it's been amazing. <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Jordana? So I've been working on some online education for Weller, some colour education. Uh, I'll be doing a live on Thursday on the Weller Global Hair Community page. And I've also been decorating the salon as well, but for the wrong reasons. And that's because I had a leak last week in the salon. So um, it was uh, a bit all up in the air, but finally we've got to the bottom of the leak. So what was, what was the cause of the leak? I've got to ask. It was a leaky pipe. And you know what? Um, the salon is quite old and I think the pipes are just 15, 20 years old. So a bit, a bit of a nuisance because no one was there to see it. And I found it quite late on, but... Yeah. Thank God for paint and fresh paint, hey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've just seen here from Amanda Lyon. And hi, Amanda. Lovely to see you here. Uh, she's just said, love the new salon. Cannot wait for it. George, where did that name come from? The Society, your new branding? 
Yeah, so uh, I think we all start out with something, don't we? And then we can kind of get on with it. We can kind of realise that we're not really punching in the right direction. So a society means a group of people that um, that come together with the same interests and the same passions. And that's something that I really feel that I've got in Rotherham already. Um, so it's really kind of just sort of signifying that and moving it forward. Um, because that, it is, we've, we've got a little cool movement, we've got a little cool society, so that's, it just made sense to name it that for me, really. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I'm loving okay. about this hair show already, guys? is the variations of where you're coming in from in the world. So we've got Gazul, who's coming in from Chile, and then we've got James Curtin, who's just put, hi, guys, from Scarborough. So, hey, from Chile to Scarborough, <laughs> fantastic. It's so great to have you all here. And if you are new to this show, honestly, this is a show that is dedicated to hairdressing. And every week we are going to be bringing you these. And I know the guys are loving it. But a, a big part of this show has already become really popular. You've been telling us that you enjoy this. And this is where we do the world hair news and our journalist is now Jordana Cabela searches out the story so we're going to go into world hair news sit back as we listen in Everyone, today's world news is all about speculation, which has been circulating the hair news and industry around salons reopening earlier than the 4th of July. So far, there is no sign of the government actually releasing a statement to confirm this. And we've been speaking to a lot of our viewers this week and last week about, you know, uh, the general consensus. And it seems to be divided. Half of the people are panic buying PPE equipment, worrying that it may not arrive in time. And the other half of the industry are so excited and abroad to have a date being brought earlier. So um, opinions divided. Uh, wherever you stand on it, all we do know is that the National Hair and Beauty Federation has released a statement and daily updates um, and that they have confirmed that there hasn't actually been any uh, government statement announcing that we will be, be bringing that date forward. So for now, hold your horses, 4th of July, still in the pipeline. If you want to stay up to date with everything, just follow NHSB on Instagram and they will keep you updated. Now, the news topic number two is something everyone's also been talking about. Um, one of hairdressing industry's leading PR companies, LWPR, following the recent movement of campaigns against violence and systemic racism, Black Lives Matter. LWPR have announced that they are offering PR services completely free and consultancy services to any black-owned salons and hairstylists who need it. Details on how to apply are um, online, but also you can email info at lwpr.biz. So thank you for that. News topic number three, we have 10,000, more than 10,000 actually, 12,000 petition signatures that have been signed for a very pressing course. Now currently the MVQ curriculum do not offer Afro hairdressing as part of their mandatory modules. And according to Jemima Bradley, aka Mullet Baby of, on Instagram, she has reached a staggering 12,000 signatures for this to actually happen. And once you get over 10,000, that means the government are actually obliged to review and, and um, see it forward. So thank you so much for that, uh, Jemima. We'll actually be hearing a little um, video from Jemima at the end of the show, so please stay tuned. And that's all from me this week, guys. Round of applause again, Jordana. The pressure of doing the news and great stories. Um, and the first thing that I just want to say to everybody that is watching this, if you see any, you know, if you've got some news and you would love to get it featured in the show, then, you know, reach out, get in touch with us, info at how to cut it. And I know Dan is watching in and he's our producer. He'll be putting links in there as well. So just keep an eye on those comments as we go through the show. And we're going to have a description for the competition 
So there's going to be links in there for tonight's amazing competition giveaway prize. But let's go into this uh, story. And I'm going to just, you, you, again, you see my eyes go up and down. It's just I see your comments coming in down here, guys. And one of the big subjects that's coming up, and again, I'm talking about the UK. I know our friends in Australia are back and various places, America are back. But here in the UK, we are working to July the 4th. There's been a lot of talk coming out about this, hasn't there, Jordana, about, you know, the speculation around when we're going to be opening. What's your thoughts to this then? There has. And, um, you know, I'm actually quite divided myself because obviously as salon owners, we've had the date 4th of July in the back of our minds or the forefront of our minds for at least, you know, five weeks now. And so for us, we've been working towards that date. We've been, um, you know, receiving deliveries and um, making the necessary provisions for it. So it can be unsettling to hear that that may be brought forward, particularly when we don't actually know the guidelines that we're going to be working with and what is going to be obligatory in terms of PPE. Um, but of course, it is positive to know that they are thinking to bring it forward at the same time. It'll be interesting to hear what you guys have to say. So comment below. Yeah, do, do keep those comments in because, again, we can't say this enough. It's a live show, magazine show, but your comments really do matter. We want those being brought into it. George, how are you setting yourself up? I mean, you've been rebranding your salon and I know you've done a lot of changes. Do you see that date being 4th of July for you? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would... What I've done is, because I've done a huge rebrand and a refurb, is I've not actually set clients up on the 4th. So, actually, with my team, if possible, we'll be coming in on the 4th and we'll be doing each of us hair and we'll be seeing the new salon set up and we'll be having a discussion about what's expected moving forward. Because, actually, I think we've been away from salon life so long that I think that, actually, to just go back on a date without any kind of planning or any kind of meeting would be a little bit silly but that's for me personally so actually on the fourth we'll be like looking after each other and then we'll be kind of moving forward from the fifth but again you know we can't comment on this and you know one of my staff is part-time and he works for the bank and actually mortgages have been extended for another three months so it's a little bit worrying like it, we've kind of set ourselves to this date but what happens if it's going to be another three months down the line we can't like i'm not going to speculate and say that it is but it, it, if you're going to extend mortgages and things like that what happens if it is it's quite scary yeah i mean yeah. i've just seen here i'll pull this comment up again and thank you for this heather robertson uh she says the speculation jordana has been worse than anything i think this is a real key thing is and i've certainly seen that in the how to cut it hairdressing community as well you know people are really worried that one minute you're hearing this and you know because it was in was it the daily mail that they said we were you know there was this rumors that we we're going to go back in on the 16th of june uh, you know i think what really comes out and i've been saying this is you know that speculation i think that there's two people really to listen to the government and the nh bf isn't it they're the ones yeah. that, that seem to communicate and you pulled that up in your story yeah absolutely Oh, yeah. I, I would just like to know a definite date. That like, before you know that, you can't really say anything, can you? Like I just, I would not like to say, you know, everyone's speculating over certain dates, but I think a, a definite date for everyone to move forward would be really beneficial. Yeah, yeah and I think you, you know, um, there are there's a lot of people out there that suffer from anxiety, and what we have to deal with with COVID is an, an anxiety driven enough. But not having any guidelines and not really being kind of kept in, in the dark is, is something I don't, I, all salon owners and, and freelancers and all hairdressers are probably having to deal with right now. So the best thing we can do is stay up to date with the National Hairdressers Federation, try and plan as much as you can. But the good news is we, whether we have two weeks or four weeks left or three and a half, actually, um, online educational platforms we are going to share with you today. Now, the links are going to be plugged into the comments here, but also plugged into the How to Cut It um, community Facebook page as well. Because as we approach the last month of lockdown, we have devised and put together an amazing list of free education. Now, this, is, this takes the form of YouTube channels. It can be um, particular websites. It's for styling hair, colouring hair, texture hair, afro hair, 
all of those um, educational online free classes that you can now fill your time with um, as we approach the last month of lockdown. So we're going to be sharing that with you now. I think Dan is going to do that or I'm going to do that. Either way, <laughs> do give it a, a good old um, uh, sift through because I think there's something for everyone in that list. Yeah, absolutely. So honestly, all of you watching in, if even if you watch in later on on Catch Up, all the comments and links that you are going to need will be in the show description as well as the comments. So Dan's there. Uh, great comments coming in already. Loving that. Uh, Colin and McAndrew and HBF have been awesome. So a lot of respect. And you touched upon it, um, obviously, with Black Lives as well, Jordana. We're not going to go too much into that because I know we've got a big talk coming from you know, a good friend of the show, Lisa Maynard, at M on Black Lives. It's been a, it's been a big week and, you know... Well, I mean, it's a subject that needs discussing. We want to obviously go into that a little bit more later on. So we're going to kind of just lighten things up a little bit, guys. And a big part of the show, as I said at the very start, is Rock Up and Share. And Rock Up and Share is exactly that. This is where we are now inviting or get in touch with us if you want to showcase your hair talents in around about two minutes, all right? You can be creative as you want. Have you got a haircut that you'd like to do? Have you got a hair up color? That's what we do. Well, this I really love and I'm so excited to have on for this Rock Up and Share ladies. We're gonna be having a hairdresser that many of you adore and I hope you adore him just for his hairdressing alone. Uh, but it gives me great <laughs> delights to introduce you to our next Rock Up and Share which is Daniel Granger. Wow, I just saw that comment there. I'll bring that back up again. Fabulous. How good. Daniel Granger. So thank you to Daniel for doing that video. Wasn't that absolutely brilliant? And, uh, you know, this is what these Rock Up and Shares are about. We wanted to put these together as rather than giving you long educational 
videos, which are great, and we have a place for it. The whole point of this show is to give it quite snappy and moving, and, and it was great to see. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're already getting some lovely comments there. Sinead says, absolutely love this. What did you think to it, George? You, you saw that? Do you know what, mate? Dan's been doing some great education in lockdown. He's, he's been doing some great free education as well. And, you know, in actual fact, he's somebody that I follow and I have actually got some education booked with him after lockdown. Um, I just think, it, you know, the way that he cuts, the way that he explains things is so therapeutic. And I think that's really, really important um, that he's not trying to... He's not trying to go above anyone else. He's just trying to explain it in a way that everyone's going to understand, and I love it. And his haircuts are amazing. And I just, I love his story. I love his background story, and I love his ethos, to be honest. Yeah, and I'm going to just say to you, Jordana, I mean, I think that's really important, what George just said, that know somebody's story and i know i cover this a lot in the podcast that you you've got to know who you are and what you are and you know dan is very clear about what he is a, as a hairdresser and you know what advice would you give to people about that well i would say that more and more we see hairdressers creating their own brand and their own identity um and not necessarily off the back of their own salon brands so it's really, really refreshing to see education coming from individuals in their own right who yeah. have build, who are building reputation in their own right and have such um, an interesting way of educating because it removes you from being, um, let's say, a brand ambassador for a certain product or whatever. And it, you connect to that hairdresser and relate to them in a much di more different way um, to make following a brand. And I'm, I'm really loving it. I'm loving the success that, that people yeah. uh, are getting from the amount of skill that they have. And, you know, also to lighten, um, in light of what we were saying before, it has been incredible to see how many of you on social media are offering free online education during lockdown. Whether or not that continues, it's been amazing. So thank you to every, each and every one of you because you've really lifted the spirits. You, you've given something for us to be yeah. motivated by. So thank you. Yeah, I love that from Daryl. Preach, Jordana, so true, he says. <laughs> it's great. and It really has been good. And I think so many of you have just really grabbed this digital time and thought, you know what? I'm going to have a go at this. And even if you've been doing lives, however you've been doing it, it's maybe given you a confidence to take that skill and maybe you know grow a business out of this going forward and i think like i say know your story know who you are and, and be yeah. yeah really passionate about it and it's very very exciting time i think to see people do this and i think it's really important that you keep that going that you don't stop this you know the, we've entered a new era and i know we get back into the salons but keep this going it really is something very special so thank you i've Look, got great one comments. quote to share Go. with you sorry real quick Dom. Yeah, that's cool. so um i follow a business leader called simon sinek and he always says people don't buy what you do they buy why you do it and um for anyone who's looking to build a brand like that um and and to build their following off their own back always remember the why and don't necessarily just remember the why share the why because it's those stories that people relate to and it's those stories that will keep you in the front of someone's memory so here here honestly you, you great words ladies really really good uh, just again if you're interested on in anything that uh, daniel's doing uh, it's uh, perfectionist i know he has his online academy and i know he's got his academy which i think he's going to be opening his doors so do reach out to daniel he's a very very approachable guy really really good and for somebody who's a tv celebrity as well then uh, yeah he, he knows his roots still so we're now going to move on and we're going to move on to a part that I know you all enjoy. Yep, <laughs> brekkie with Bell. So I'm going to let Georgia just uh, lead you into this and then we're going to go into brekkie with Bell. Absolutely, guys. So welcome to the third episode of Brecky with Bell. You know, I've had so much fun doing this and actually we've thought about... I've had a lot of stories this week and a lot of dilemmas that have kind of led me to believe that maybe once a month we might do hairdressing horrors um, just because I had such a laugh. But without further ado, I will do Brecky with Belle. Remember, if you've got any questions or dilemmas, it's completely confidential and you remain absolutely anonymous. <laughs> Here goes. 
Welcome to the third episode of Brecky with Belle. Remember, darlings, I need your dilemmas and I need your DMs. Remember, it stays completely confidential and you remain absolutely anonymous. So guys, this week's episode is actually really focused on education. I've had some amazing questions. So question number one is, do I like practicing on doll's heads? Yes, absolutely. I think if you want to try a new technique, a new application, and actually using a doll's head is the best way to go about it. It's also the safest. Now, I've been doing a lot of education online on doll's heads. Um, and just from a point of view, if you're wanting to do a lot of color work, I always recommend you get your doll's head from Pivot Point because it means that the hair is good quality and you can reuse them quite a few times over. So question number two, this is a really hairdressing focus, but I'm going to change it around and make sure that it is. Who is your favorite Irish person? So my favorite Irish uh, hairdresser is Damien Johnson, and he's the guy that actually cuts my hair. Um, he's amazing at what he does. So question number three is, will I be back educating around the world after lockdown or will I be salon focused? Now listen guys, we have had a lot of time away from the salon and we have got a lot of clients that we need to see to. So yes, I am hoping to be back doing education, but more towards the back end of this year. I definitely need to spend some time in my salon. I'm having a huge refurb, a huge rebrand, and I definitely need to be and want to be salon focused for at least you know, four or five months. And then I think education will slowly start picking up. Um, but yeah, definitely salon focused. So question number four, like I said, this week's episode is quite education focused. What are my thoughts on online versus face-to-face -face education? Now, listen, I love online education. I've done lots of it myself. I've participated um, in lots of it myself. And I'm in no doubt that it's helped a lot of you guys through lockdown. However, I am a huge fan of face-to-face. -face. I think when you're in the room with an educator, you can really see things from a different angle. You can really get a feel for what the educator is doing. So I believe there is a place for both. I started online education because I wanted to make things more affordable and accessible for people, but I don't think you can beat a day face to face with your favorite educator. <laughs> I hope you enjoy that. Jordana, what do you reckon watching into George's uh, Brecky with Bell? I just love the the types of comments that you get. They they just range from all aspects of everyday hair salon life. And as we all know, as we all live it, it's 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 a juicy world that we live in. Um, so keep them coming, guys. Georgia's got an array of experience in order to answer them um, with her charm. So thanks for, <laughs> for writing in. So I, I will always coming. say out if you please don't always follow George's advice. So she's just given her personal <laughs> yeah. opinion on that. I think that's always important important yeah. to know but those questions you almost think I mean I, I love the one last week what was it sleeping with the, the boss a receptionist sleeping with the boss yeah, so, yeah. I mean, but these are questions that are coming in aren't they George absolutely and I get a ray of them but please you know if you ever read the Sun newspaper and you ever followed Dear Deirdre then you know please know that I do not have a qualification in this this is just <laughs> what I would do on a day to day basis uh, so, yeah, it is a little bit of fun, but of course, if I do always, always, whenever I receive a question or a dilemma, guys, you know, I know that we've got limited time on this, so I can only give a limited answer, and I will always, you know, inbox somebody, I will give a more in-depth answer, because I think it's important, because a lot of people do face these problems, they face these dilemmas, um, but I am not a shrink, I'm not here to say that this is definite. But I have lived a life, and I would hope that I would be able to give you yeah. the best advice possible. I, I've I just seen a comment out. there, uh, Joyce. Sorry, I'm laughing. Uh, Brian McCallum is just, uh, are you not supposed to sleep with your boss? <laughs> Honestly, look, hairdressers, <laughs> let's keep this professional, <laughs> please. We have some risk. <laughs> my mother watches this, so come on. <laughs> but absolutely, I, there was a question there that I, I loved, actually. Um, you know, Irish person, you know, who's your favourite Irish person? Uh, Irish hairdressing has just gone absolutely mega over the last year. And I've certainly noticed that through the podcast. And you I mentioned actually, Damien. What a great guy Damien is. Brilliant cutter. I fly. I fly to Belfast. I fly to Belfast and I get my hair cut by Damien. You know, and I pay I pay the 100 quid for my hair cut and I pay for my flight because his haircut is amazing. Like, wow. when you find your true hair, hairdresser, 
Like, it's a really special thing. Mm. And I have to say that, you know? And he is my hairdresser. God, he he puts st- my hair like no other. Big statement. Wow. That's always think, isn't it? Who you go to? Who's your hairdresser then, Jordana? Do you have one particular hairdresser in the salon? Yeah. Um, one of our art directors, Adam, who's a very, very close family friend of mine, he's been with Bella for 26 years. He'll hate me for saying that, but, um, yeah, he, he cuts my hair. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Do you know who cuts my yeah. hair? Go on, Dom. Oh, it's a professional called Dom. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> He's very, very good. So, uh, look, guys, yeah. keep the comments coming in. It, it, the show is just feeling so right. And the, the feedback that you've all been giving to the hair show has been just terrific so if you are liking this please do like love share this out uh we want this really to go far and it takes a lot of work putting this show in and doing lives and i've just seen our friend here uh simon simon townley i saw you simon's there um uh, let's pick up there but uh, i just want to reference simon because i'm so impressed with what simon's done over the last uh, lockdown as well with his group hair socials uh, and i i think we've been on there haven't you george you went on to the hair socials done a live there yeah i was on there i think what he's done is amazing and um, we were talking about you know free hairdressing links for free education i have to say like hair social is undoubtedly the, the best like i'm not saying that because i'm on there but i wanted to get immediately involved uh, because of the the quality of, of people that are teaching on there it's been absolutely amazing and i think what he's done you know i met simon when i worked with him a brand with a brand like about a year ago but what he's done has been really inspirational and i really admire him yeah. for putting the time in and and creating such an incredible platform for people to follow especially in lockdown when people are financially yeah. struggling amazing and he's going to come on and it's to also podcast. the conversation that keeps going you know with the community and sharing each other's concerns and and bouncing ideas or energies off, off each other, which I think is, is really important at a time he, where we can't even meet up. Yeah. He's become famous overnight, and Simon <laughs> yeah. never wanted to become famous. Uh, and he's like, so Simon. humble with it, isn't he? he, he yeah. He's always humble. So, Simon, lots of love coming to you, mate. Yeah, come on, stop it, he says. Yeah, right, come on. Enjoy <laughs> it while you can, Simon. It doesn't last forever, honestly, but it's fantastic. So, again, keep the comments coming in. Keep the likes coming in. Uh, we've got the competition coming up very soon to win InnoLux. We're going to be announcing last week's winner of the Kerastrate hamper. So if you entered that, it could be you. And uh, the forms to enter all our competitions are in the uh, description <coughs> to this show. And I think Dan will be putting stuff in there. And again, you don't have to do it even just tonight. You can do this on catch up as well. So it's been a big week. It's, uh, you know, it, 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 unless you've been stuck in a, a, some sort of cave for the last sort of week or so, you will see that there's been, yeah, a really difficult time with black lives. But it's been something that's been pushed to our attention and rightly so. I think it's something that needs covering. And we have got a friend of our show, somebody who came on to my podcast last week to be our hairdressers open talk guest and this is where we bring you big subjects all right hot topics topics to really get conversations going and this one i please ask you that you sit and watch this and it's hard hitting but it's something that we all need to hear so without further ado this week's hairdressers open talk with lisa maynard atem Hi everyone, I hope that you are all safe and well. So firstly, introductions. My name is Lisa Maynard Atem and I am the founder of The Social Word, an agency that specialises in social media strategy. I am also one third of the branding brainstorm alongside Georgia Bell and Carver Johnson. Now I'm here on The Hair Show tonight to talk briefly about a subject that is very close to my heart because it is something that has affected me my entire life and that subject is racism. Now, I'm sure by now you have all seen the horrendous video of the murder of George Floyd. I mean, I don't even have the words to describe how traumatic seeing that video was. But the saddest thing about it for me was that it wasn't surprising. It's not the first time it's happened. And it won't be the last. That's the first thing to say. You know, we just have to be really honest about this. And... 
what I find quite interesting about this whole subject is the the argument around the whole Black Lives Matter. Now, whenever some people, not everyone, but whenever some people hear that phrase, they respond with, well, all lives matter. And in principle, all lives should matter. But in the cold light of day, all lives don't matter. Because if all lives did matter, George Floyd would still be alive. If all lives did matter, Sandra Bland would still be alive. If all lives did matter, Trayvon Martin would still be alive. If all lives really did matter, racism wouldn't even be a thing. It wouldn't exist. People wouldn't care about this. If they wouldn't give it a second thought. But the reality is all lives don't matter. And George Floyd, as much as I hate to say this, was one in a long line of innocent black people who have lost their lives as a result of this. They're not criminals, they're not terrible people, they haven't done anything horrendously wrong. Their crime, to some, was being black. You know, and watching this might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Good, you should be uncomfortable. Why? Because racism is completely wrong. And these few minutes of you feeling uncomfortable is what I and many other people of colour have felt our entire lives. We are constantly uncomfortable. You walk down the street, somebody makes monkey noises at you. You walk into a shop and people start following you. Why? Is this really a threat to people? No. The colour of my skin is not a threat to you, just like the colour of your skin is not a threat to me. I'm not gonna sit here and bang on. All I'm gonna say is, all lives should matter, but all lives currently don't. It's not enough to just say that you are against racism. We all have a responsibility to be openly anti-racist. If you encounter any instances of racism, please stand up to them, even if it's just a comment. It's not, it's not okay to just let any form of racism slide. It's not all right. And it's gone on for far too long. For hundreds of years, black people have faced systemic racism and oppression, all because of this. You know, and from an industry point of view, and not just the hair industry, there needs to be more representation. I have lost count of the amount of times in the past I've been into salons, oh, we don't do Afro hair. Why don't you do Afro hair? Why? Is it that different? It's still hair. And like I say, it's not just the hair industry, it's the fashion industry, it's the beauty industry. It needs to stop. There needs to be equality, there needs to be fairness, there needs to be parity. Like I say, if you are uncomfortable watching this, this is a few moments of discomfort for you. This is my entire life. And the reality is, I will have to live with racism for the rest of my life, as will other people of colour. So please, if you see anybody being racially attacked, please stand up for them. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye. Big subject. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's a subject, and I'm so f thank you, Lisa, firstly for coming on and doing today's hairdressers open talk. I think I could not have thought of anybody better to have delivered that. She delivered it in such a beautiful way. Uh, it was emotional. It was powerful. Um, it's been well covered. And where 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 are you at with this, Jordana? What's been going on? Well, I think what a lot of what she has said, um, number one, is, is so incredibly moving, but I really resonate with the fact that she said, if you feel uncomfortable watching this, if you feel uncomfortable um, listening to the words that I'm saying um, and also sharing her, her personal experiences, then I think you're kind of feeling the right thing. And it's just such a shame 
that it's taken another black life and to be ended innocently for us to actually start this movement properly. And I don't know about you guys and, and everyone that's listening, but it feels slightly different this time. Not because of all the black squares that people have posted, not because there's a bit of a social trend on hashtags, but because I, I've spoken to a lot of my friends and I've spoken to a lot of our community about it, and it seems to be hitting us harder than ever before. And I think it is so important to realise that this is not just something we'll be talking about today. We need to do this every day and we need to literally live this because they've been living it for that long. And this is not about black people standing up for what they believe in. This is about white people finally feeling their pain and, and doing something about it, even if it is so small, like, you know, um, calling someone out that may innocently say something or, you know, endorsing something about the MVQ, like signing a petition. There's so much we can do, and it doesn't end at donating or one protest. It, it's continuous. She mentioned there, George, about salons, you know, not being able to do black textured hair. You know, it's, it's, it's about learning to understand each other, and it's about learning to stand together. And that's not just in everyday life, but that is within our industry. And, you know, actually, we have had a petition signed by 10,000 people this week that want to introduce doing black hair into salons, and rightly so, because actually, you know what, black hair is different. And if we're not taught it, then automatically, if we say, I'm so sorry, we don't do it, it's going to form a type of equality that isn't there. So if it's already on the curriculum, then actually that's going to give inclusion. And that's what we want. You know, I don't do black hair because I don't specialise it in it. I specialise in colour. But that isn't racist. That's because I don't know about it. And I've never been taught about it. So actually, we need a curriculum out there that's going to be inclusive of everybody. And that is going to help us stand together as one and not separately. So there isn't going to be, you know, black people doing hair. That we're going to be doing all types of hair together as one. And we're going to be standing up together and saying, this is what we do. This is what we believe. And I think that's really important moving forward. Yeah, I agree. And I think our, our end goal, particularly for the hairdressing industry, our end goal would be to have interracial salons. Um, because why is it fair that a black assistant will have to learn Caucasian hair before they learn about their own hair? Absolutely. And why, why? So when we walk into an Afro hair shop, we know if they've got MVQ qualifications that they can do our hair. And, and why is that OK? And you know what, it's something that a lot, not a lot of people actually knew and not a lot of people um, considered until now. But regardless of whether you've had that revelation now or before, let's do something about it. And I think power is in numbers. So let's uh, sign the petitions and start a movement. Yeah, some great and comments. And so many in. people have stood together this week. Like, look at yeah. the... Look at the protests you know so many people have stood and, and and respected what's what's going on and, and that's what it needs you know yeah and i'm gonna just Power finish energy. on this and a good friend of us in the show she's our feature guest is jemima cousins and if you saw the first hair show pilot show that we done she done a review and she's going to be coming in uh, much more regularly to the show but i actually had a phone call with jemima uh, on this and I, I wanted to talk to her about it and i think she said it perfectly for me that this shouldn't be just a box that we tick and we feel like we've done this we we don't do this for vanity we do it because it's right okay we do it because it yeah. feels right and this has to be just something that's interwoven into our industry and yes i, I we've got to become better at doing textured hair it's it's think that maybe a lot of us are guilty of and we've all got to do our part in this but equally yeah. we are all in this together we are human beings who are all got to just show love i mean in a world where it's so strained as it is out there i just feel yeah together we're we're good so thank you so much lisa thank you everybody uh, look there's there's lisa who's um just giving us some thank yous honestly we're all supporting everybody on this one so we are gonna just move things along a little bit now and we have um 
a lovely part of our show every week is our friends our supporters of the show and a big shout out to Jez Barnett who is the founder of Kerastrate and Inolux and uh, last week we had a wonderful competition giveaway uh, it's, to enter these you have to fill out a form which is in the show description and we are going to announce that winner uh, tonight and uh, I'm going to let Jordana Cabela do this and just a reminder before I hand that into Jordana this prize is also going to go towards an end of the month prize so so far we've currently got the uh what have we got we've got the weller hamper we've got the kerastrate hamper all going to be together and we've got another prize coming yep. up but anyway i'm going to hand this over to george so georgia uh so ja, ja, uh, georgia <laughs> <laughs> okay so george so yeah let, let's hand this over Drum to roll. you sorry i've got my teeth all mixed up is jordana going to know what she's going to say but firstly i want to say a massive thank you to Straight because all together they have given all of their uh, product to us, including the moisture mist, the ultimate oil like you name it, we've got it, and it's the amount of £157. So the winner is Stacey Gage. So we want to say a massive thank you to Stacey for entering, and you are the winner this week. Also, guys, just a quick one with the Kerastrate, there is an affiliate code. So if you go on to kerastrate.com and you go into the affiliate desktop and you type it in, you can actually sell Kerastrate through their website and you can um, gain a percentage of that. So that will keep you going through lockdown. But yeah, a massive thank you to Stacey Gage. You are the winner this week. And I'm going to pass it over to Jordana, who's going to announce this week's competition. So this week's competition, if you are just as, as obsessed as we are with healthy hair and glass looking hair and shine, then you are in for a winner because this week is sponsored by Innerlux, who have very generously donated a package worth to the value of £97. So we have the Elixir V2 product and the Platinum Shampoo Conditioner and Mask, which I've used myself and it makes your hair feel like silk. So if you want to stand a chance to win, please just fill out the Google document form, which is going to be linked in the comments below. So, yes, go ahead, guys. Simple as that. Well, what a brilliant video. Absolutely loved that there. It was so creative. If you want to be our lucky winner, which will be announced next week, please just fill out the form below. It's just your name, email address, simple as that. Now, also, the Interlux prize will also be added to the bundle, which at the end of every month, we take all of the weekly campers, put them together, and one lucky winner wins all of them. So there's one prize for next week's winner, but also one bundle of Interlux that goes into the end monthly competition prize as well. So, guys, entering, 
Next up, we have our Rock Up and Share contestant who has very kindly um, sent us one of her how-to videos. This is Brooke Evans by the... Um, he is actually also a member of the Fame team. Am I right in saying that, Don? You are. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Brooke Evans. Here is the video. Wow. Weren't that Amazing. proper good? Well yeah, done, Brooke. So I love Brooke Evans. She is honestly a superstar hairdresser in the making and such a lovely girl with it. I, I had the pleasure to interview her for the podcast and learn about her story. But also what we learned about was her being in the current fame team. And we have Jordana Cabello with us, who's a former fellowship fame team member. So yeah. what was that like, Jordana? I can't believe it was actually three years ago, but it was it was life changing. If I'm honest, it was an incredible platform um, that basically puts you on a journey of a year's worth of education. It's run by the Fellowship, which is an organisation. Um, you can find more details of thefellowshiphair.com.co.uk. Um, so you travel the world, you get mentored by the hairdressers' finest, and more importantly, you pair up with three. Um, like-minded individuals who are dotted around the UK um, and Wales and it's just an amazing journey because um, you, you get to share ideas you get to come out of the salon and do um, and delve into different parts of hairdressing like fashion and, and avant-garde and it's just amazing it changed my life so if it's something you guys want to do and want to enter you have to be under the age of 35 sorry Is but that enter if you want Okay, I maybe have to pass that opportunity. Then. But uh, <laughs> brilliant. I just saw Daryl saying he would love to go for that going forward. Uh, um, George, what about you? Is this something that would ever grab you being part of the Fellowship Fame team? Well, to be honest, mate, I don't actually win anything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to go for the Fame team because it's the hardest competition ever, but it is the most rewarding. Um, you know, I, I think it, I think it's fantastic. I think what Brooke showed tonight was a fantastic textured look. I think there were so many different techniques with it, and I think it was amazing. I'm personally, I'm more drawn to colour, um, and I think that, you know, the fame team is definitely drawn to styling. So I, just, I think it depends on what floats your boat. But if you want to elevate yourself within the industry, 
then the phone team is definitely something to go for. Yeah. And here's a question actually for you, George. You might be able to answer this one. It comes from our good friend Alina, who's a big friend, friend of the show. Uh, I hope it's not only for UK stylists. What's um, the no, situation on that one? I don't know. I don't think it is. I think I think it's um, it's a bit like X Factor. If you're good, you'll get through. But you got to be under thirty-five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's definitely inclusive. Like, yeah, it's it's the whole of the UK and Ireland, as I believe it is. Um, the only reason being that obviously, if you're in the same country that um, you can actually go to and attend the monthly meetings and I think sometimes even fortnightly meetings and inspiration days. Um, that, they that do. Yeah, Jordana, I was part of the Colour Project as well, so we had monthly meetings. So if you are from another uh, country, and they were laying us from, I believe it's Cyprus, so she'd have to be in the UK to meet for a monthly meeting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it might be it might be quite awkward in that sense uh, to get the most out of what uh, the fellowship are giving to you. Yeah. I believe Australia do it as well, don't they? The Australian fame team, yeah. and, and I think you swap over, don't you? They come over to the UK and. Yeah, yeah. I know the fame team go to Australia. So, yeah, great. It's um, I think it's great. I think it, you know, it's, the, it's having these opportunities outside, you know, the confines of our salon, which is what's so good to see. And I think if it helps create that real artistry part of you in the industry, then that's got to be a great thing. And that leads us on to really our main feature part of the show, which is our masters at work. And these have proved extremely popular. Uh, this is... Really, this is something that we kind of put to what we define as real hairdressing icons, award-winning hairdressers. So, so far we've had uh, Jordana's mum, Beverly C, formerly Cabela. We have had last week Patrick Cameron, which we had a problem with the video, but we have shared that. Go and check that out. This one tonight, uh, I promise you are going to have a five-minute fest of absolute incredible work. Paul Stafford. All right, now, please show your love for Paul Stafford. One, he is, what an absolute beautiful man he is. So stylish, so incredibly talented. I love watching his work. And he has done this video for you. And he's going to share the story behind this real defining moment in his hairdressing career. And he's going to explain that to you. So... Please just watch and please show your love to Paul Stafford, who has, again, I'm going to remind you of this, he has done this video for us guys and you watching this, all right? So here goes Masters at Work with Paul Stafford. Amazing! When I first did the fly haircut, I, I, I had already been working on a lot of shapes and ideas that I had gone back to my youth and my childhood, my teenage years, and, and, and I had revisited those looks with a view that I wanted to try and maybe do something new with them or uh, reinterpret them. Uh, so for me, it wasn't actually as if I was trying to create something really original. I just wanted to take a little step backwards to move forwards. The fly was a haircut that I'd seen numerous times on friends of mine in the, in the late 70s and early 80s. Probably started its life as the Chelsea haircut, uh, the skin bird, and maybe even the feather cut. So for me, the fly is, is it's an evolution of those shapes. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm, I'm gonna recreate a version of the fly that we're going to uh, do in a very technical way. We're gonna do a step by step. Um, recreate the kind of mindset of what I was thinking the very first time I've done it, but maybe we'll add a few little twists and turns to make it modern for you. Okay, so we start the haircut by really disconnecting the top section from the longer lengths, and this is pivotal to the shape. It creates a really nice flatness through this area, and that's going to allow this to float and disconnect and look really ethereal. Early in 2016, in actual fact it was the day David Bowie died, and, and as I was working with the model that I, I decided to um, create the fly on, 
when she got up and walked through the salon, uh, the little pieces that we'd left behind, just little feathery bits, started to float. I, th I decided then that I'd call it the fly, and that's how it got its name. What we're moving into now is the main body of the haircut, and this is the area probably that is most pivotal to that skin bird Chelsea shape. This area from the crown to the occipital bone is where the, the biggest amount of disconnection is going to happen. Um, so what we really want is we want that perfect roundness through the shape. We want it so it really fits into the head and so that all this length that we've left behind, it will float and move around and do lots of interesting things. And this is where the haircut gets interesting because you can see immediately you've got that proper kind of feather cut feel to it. We developed the haircut and it became you know, less of that raw street culture um, type shapes, that DIY haircut. It became something a lot more commercial, something that was more user friendly. So through the exterior of the haircut, what I've done is I've just kept those corners. Um, uh, if you can imagine, I've created like a little A-line layer. All of a sudden, it just seemed this thing had gone viral. People were commenting on it, they were liking it. It had been shared lots of times. It changed my life in some ways because people started to identify that as our work. That became our, the trademark haircut, the signature haircut. So now you can see why we call it the teardrop. It's just got that really nice kind of push forward. It's got that lovely movement. You can see the center piece where we've left the weight is creating the kind of um, the concave of that shape and pushing it down into that lovely kind of softer finish. We don't want the disconnection to be so obvious. It looks like a short haircut that's stopped and it's become a long haircut. And that's the beauty of this shape. So we're coming to the last part of the haircut, what I'm actually gonna do is this little disconnected um, fly that we've left at the back. It's really simple, all we gotta do is blend that through to the section just between the eye socket and the ear. So that's pretty much the basic shape finish. We've obviously got a little bit more detail and a bit more personalizing to do with it. And, when, and we'll do that when we've had it colored because I think it, for me with these shapes, it's the color that's gonna put it together. It's, it's what's gonna give it that personality and make it look like something that people want to wear. But I think with color, what it does is it gives it a more individualistic personality. It brings it up to date, makes it look like something unique. And I think with the color placement on the fly particularly, I think it's important because really what you want to emphasize is obviously the little elements of disconnection, but also the personality of the haircut. Okay, so that's um, uh, our updated version of the fly. It's been an absolute pleasure doing the, the new reworked fly for you guys, and I hope you like it. Just before lockdown happened, I, I, we managed to get the new Denman campaign satire um, wrapped up and finished, which we shot in Dublin, and it's something I'm really excited about for the future. I can't wait to share that with you when, when it drops. But the wonderful thing about satire was out of nowhere, we reinvented the fly again. Uh, this one was very inspired by two things. Uh, Billie Eilish had that great look where, you know, she had the green and black hair, and we really wanted to capture an essence of that for this campaign. The other thing too was, I started to become very inspired by 50s things. So we had Billie Eilish, then we had Rockabilly. So the Billie Fly is a whole new look, a whole new idea. And we're gonna show you a little snippet of that on this so you can get a bit of an essence of where we've taken an idea, developed it, and made it into something completely different. And that's the future of, of the fly, and that's what we're looking forward to in 2020 sharing with you. I hope you've enjoyed my little history of a haircut. Thank you for having us, and um, enjoy the fly. Paul Stafford, so thank you. Another big round of applause, everybody. Lots of love for Paul Stafford. Brilliant, Paul. Thank you so much for doing that video. Honestly, I I spoke to Paul last Sunday, and he was like, well, okay, Dom, and it, he really was as honest to say that that haircut has triggered something new for him. It's the first haircut that he's done in some weeks, and for him to go back and explore that fly, which is just so cool the man is cool i love everything about his street culture i mean you know that's where he gets it from isn't it george yeah like oh honestly that guy is so cool and you know something that i really love i love how he modernizes 
everything that he sees from a regression from what he finds cool. And I think that that's like, I find that really real. I find it real genuine that he likes an era, he looks at it and then he progresses it forward. And for me, that's, that is, that really is a master at work. Yeah. And Kelly's just said there, so amazing to watch. And wouldn't you think, agree, Jordana, that Paul Stafford knows who he is. He's created this such a cool everything is so styled even the backdrop there you know I love the Paul Weller influences and you can see British culture really came into you know his thinking even you know with the fly haircut Jordana I lost you there guys can you hear me yeah I was just saying that the whole influence of Paul and where he gets it from British street culture you can see you know Paul Weller skins and it all really has a big sort of influence for him and it's so important that you find something that really connects with you wouldn't you say Jordana yeah absolutely and I think you know a lot of the time in the salon we're sort of turning out clients one after the other and it's not until you actually have the time to do something creative that you delve into the why you know we were talking about this earlier isn't it the why what inspires you because when you have a story behind something it becomes art whereas I've definitely been guilty of doing a lot of haircuts where it's kind of you can do it with your eyes closed um, but what's so nice about about Paul is that he really delves into every single element that inspires him, um, and it, it really shows throughout that video. Uh, what and I have to go on, George. Sorry, go on, go for it. I have to say, Jordana, there's a lot of like what we said. There's a lot of uh, disconnection, but a lot of connection. And I know that somebody, you know, I go to somebody that puts my hair that used to work for Paul, and there's a lot of disconnection in my hair core. But there's a reason for it, which I think yeah. is really on point I think is really important because people can disconnect and they can take away and it can have no rhyme or reason but actual actually when people do it in my haircut they do it for a reason even though it looks like a visual it's there to help me style my hair and I think that that's what's really yeah. important about Paul and his brand that there's a reason behind all of that and the way that they call it, and the strategic behind it I think that's really great and I think there's heaps of disconnections in every part of the haircut but what is amazing is how he makes it look invisible yeah. and it just cleats out so amazing and a big shout to the color as well i know it's his wife who who done the hair color there and it looks just stunning everything was just beautifully done and again that video so we're, we're gonna put that onto all our channels as well so if you want to go and see that i think paul has actually created a 10 to 15 minute video so we if you want to watch that a bit more in depth we will be sharing that onto the uh, How To Cut It YouTube channel because we are on YouTube tonight, which is amazing. I don't know if many are watching on there, but we're there anyway. So go and check out these channels. It's really important. And I'd like you to put in the comments below, who would be your masters at work? Who's your hairdresser that you think I'd love to see on there? So come on, tag them in, put them in them comments. And also who would be your rising stars? Who do you want to see more of? Get your comments in, come on. This is your show, The Hairdressers Show. So we're kind of coming towards the end now of what has been, I have to say, wonderful, wonderful uh, evening. I'm just enjoying it. And so far, fingers crossed, all our connections, ladies, have held up pretty well. So that's great news. And, you know, the show is evolving. That's what it's about. And it's you guys and so many regular faces coming in here. Uh, And that's great. That's the community that we want to bring with this show. And we spoke about earlier on Jordan in your news about the uh, signatures the campaign to get in textured yeah. hair in there and we're doing something every week or <clears throat> excuse me nearly every week where we're kind of handing a bit of a an award as such aren't we so can I yeah. just let you explain a little bit about this Jordana as we go into the of video of course so each week at the end of every episode um we want to celebrate and um and give recognition to the individuals out there in the hair community who are our unsung heroes. These are people doing something in the background, doing something for their community um, and what have you. And there's so many different ways that people can do that. So last week we had the Hair Brothers who were actually have put together a 100-page document on how to wear your hair at home in exchange for any NHS donations that they donated all to um, the NHS so thank you for that, Hair Brothers. This week, a very, very special guest, um, Jemima Bradley, um, and she is also known as Mullet Baby on Instagram. Now, I, I've worked very closely with Jemima. She's a wonderful and talented young rocket in the industry. 
Um, she recently, in light of recent events, has actually put together a petition, which takes a lot of courage, and has put it out there on her Instagram account. She shared it, she's got other people to share it, and the petition is all about, as we said in the, in the start of the show, having NVQ uh, mandatory curriculum to include Afro hair. So thank you so much, Jemima. This week's Unsung Hero Award goes to you. Um, so thank you so much. We've got 12,000 petitions already signed, which means the government will be overviewing it. But please, if you haven't signed it, head over to Mullet Baby on Instagram and um, give it a sign. So Jemima, here's your video. Thank you again. Hello everyone, thank you so much for this nomination. It means so much to have this issue recognized in this kind of way and something that really needed to happen, so thank you. Uh, we've just got over 10,000 signatures now, which is incredible because it means, you know, the government has to act, there's no choice. So thank you so much to everyone that has signed and thank you for, you know, for you guys having me on here to be able to discuss this kind of matter. Um, it's really a conversation that needs to be happening. Thank you again. Back to you guys. Well done, Jemima. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Dan has gone into the comments there, guys. So that petition, there's a link directly there. So go and get that in because I say, I think we've all got to get it. I mean, it's been well discussed. And if you feel that there is somebody out there in hairdressing who's doing something really, really good, then get in touch with us and let us put the spotlight on them because we like to finish on a little bit of a high. People that are doing great things, don't we, George? It's, it's so nice that, you know, we're a caring industry as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got to do things to make a change. We can sit there and think about how we're going to do things and not actually do anything. But, you know, Jemima's really got out there She's made this petition. She's made people sign it. You know, there's almost 12,000 signatures, and that's got to stand for something, you know. And if we want equality and we want to stand against racism and we want to make a change, then this is the way forward. And everyone yeah. has the potential to do that, which is just amazing. I absolutely salute her. Yeah. Yeah, well done, Jemima. Well yeah, and I think, guys, we need your help to find all the other unsung heroes out there because they are hiding. So please um, nominate whoever it is. Send us an email. Send us a, um, a slide into our DMs or what have you um, <laughs> because we want to celebrate you guys and we want to bring some recognition and we want to use our platform in a social responsible way. And we're so aware of people that, you know, do things out there without always receiving, like, gratitude. And, and this is our way of saying thank you. Yeah, and no. sometimes it can be hard to nominate yourself as well. But if you really feel like you're out there and you're making a change and you're doing something to make a change, then please don't hesitate to email us at how to cut it or message Dom or slide into my DMs because I want to know. <laughs> You know, it's not, you know, if you feel like you're doing something to make a change, there's no harm in nominating yourself either. It's all about being in it together and pushing forward for a more positive, um, inclusive industry. Yeah, and that's what we're Absolutely. all about here at The Hair Show. We, we really are. I think each one of us, and I know all you guys that are listening and watching into this, feel the same. And the better we make our industry, the better we're all going to be in our lives and happiness and fulfilment. We have a massive part to play, I, I believe, going forward on this. So very easy. If you want to get in touch in anything, if you want to submit a video, you want to just get some ideas on how to get involved, email info at howtocut.it, not .com, .it, all right? Because as I always say, the domain howtocutit.com wasn't available. So we went for that one because it sounded smart. So get in touch, all right? And yeah, let us know. Let us know your news. Let us know what you want in this show, all right? Put your comments in the community, Facebook page, LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever you're seeing it, and let us know what do you want more of because you have to help us create this show, all right? We need you to be a part of this. So if you know a master's at work, a hair hero, if you want to do an educational uh, video then we're all for it because we also want to share these videos not just in the hair show we have a really healthy channel going on now that we want to build so that video I believe Jemima we are going to be uh, there's a longer video isn't there where she explains about that 
Yes, so she um, she talks about the reasoning behind it and her journey as well in a five-minute video which we'll be posting separately. It will be on the How to Cut It page on Facebook um, if you want to have a look at it, but we'll be only able to post it after this live. And guys, this hair show is it's important to note that this is not sponsored by anyone, so we don't have any alter, alter um, motivations. This is just literally three hairdressers and Dan in their living rooms with a, a ring light and, and we want to make this uh, an enjoyable entertainment show for you so yeah suggestions are totally welcome whatever yeah, wh wh wherever they come sorry you guys can't see it well said there jordana uh, janet's just said which link please for the competition uh, just scroll up the link janet and dan has put the link in there for the competition to enter uh, that all right so just go and click on it's very simple it just takes you through to a form just put your name in and that is it and once you've done it you don't have to do it again and you're then can be part of our competitions going forward and then we pick up random so thank you again jazz who's watching in putting the comments in at inner lux um Kara Strait, such a friend of the show so Amazing. thank you this honestly it, this you know when you do sing and you feel like you are doing something just so right it feels so good it it the three of us you know I, i've got to say we we absolutely love bringing you it's a lot of work i'm not going to say anybody <laughs> does like but putting this together is a lot of work but it's something that i feel is going to become really a staple part of the hair industry every monday because i used to love the hairdressers journal every friday and big shout out to jane at hairdress journal good friends of the show but you look forward to saying and i want you to find this monday night becomes that part for you where you just say oh the hair show's on then friendly faces are there and you yeah. know we can all talk isn't that right george Every Monday, you know, we are in our... I'm in my porch, Jordana's in the living room, Dom's in his studio. We, you know, we start this at, like, 9 a.m. on a Monday. <laughs> it's a full week of prep. Like, we are in different parts of the country right now trying to bring this to you, and we just do it for the love of what we do. Um, yes. so we're always open to suggestion, and we're always open to make it better. We're only the third episode in, but we do this because of the passion and the love that we have for this industry and, and, and not for anything else. So, you know, it, it is challenging because it takes up an entire day. I've got three kids under eight. <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> a secondary school in my house. And we <laughs> just want to work together and bring you the best content possible. So we, you know, we need your input. We need your kind of suggestions moving forward to make sure that every week we're bringing you something fresh. We're bringing you something exciting. You know, you are, a bigger part of the show than what than anything else because your input and your suggestions actually make our show don't they guys you know yeah they do Oh, that's wonderful. So well said there, George, and brilliant. It, yeah, that's fabulous. Can't think of anything better to finish on, but I'm going to finish on something else yeah. in a minute. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, So we're just going to, as we say goodbye to you two delightful ladies. So, Jordana, what's your week looking like? What's it grabbing your eye for the week ahead? Uh, the week ahead, I've got a live with uh, Wella on Thursday. I've got a lot of prep to do for uh, the salon, including rotors and uh, finding out how things are going to work. And I'm just hanging on to the next announcement from the government as to our guidelines for PPE. Great. Well, thank you, Jordana. And what about you, George? What's uh, looking? What's your week looking like? And come oh, over well, to the right here or left. Yes, yes, you're going over there again. Come on, over here in the centre. Sorry, <laughs> I've got a live with the one and only Jez Barnett. So uh, from Inner Looks and Kerry Strait. So we're going live on Thursday at four thirty. So if anyone wants, wants to watch that, then we'll be on Instagram. And then I've got to get a centre unit made for my salon. <laughs> I've got to get it painted. Oh, it's just, it's, it's unreal, actually, the amount of work I've got to do, but I'm excited for it, like, and then I'm waiting for the government guidelines. Great. Well, OK, come on, audience, before I say our final farewells, show your love and appreciation to our two wonderful hosts, Georgia Bell and Jordana Cabella. Lots of love hearts, likes, and we'll see you next week, ladies. Keep in Bye. touch with them. OK, Bye. thank you. Have a great week. Bye. 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 There they go. So that is it. Another week of the hair show what a fantastic show this is really honestly i'm loving it i feel so good with internet connections held up brilliantly that's been a big part of it and you know we've been working on this and we're going to keep building on this as we said so june make sure to not miss this show the best way to do it is actually like the facebook page how to cut it 
I know many of you are on the How to Cut It hairdressing community. Keep in there. We're going to repeat it in there as well. We're on Instagram, How to Cut It. Follow us on all these channels because we, as I say, this kind of started out as the podcast that I know many of you listen into, but it's kind of evolving. The whole How to Cut It brand is evolving into something very, very exciting, which is about you. So, yeah, get involved. We have also our Young Guns, Hair Young Guns, uh, with the lovely Lizzie Williams. So if you've got hairdressers, uh, 15 to 25 go and check out that group she'd love to welcome you in to that group and I've got to finish on the, today's podcast because uh, many of you I know listening to the podcast it's something I've been doing for yeah last three and a bit years and I'm so proud of the podcast and every week I bring on to the show leading names well today's guest is one of hairdressing's most iconic names of the last 35 years Charles Worthington so to actually have an interview with Charles Worthington and he shares his story believe me which is incredible and we learn about his hair care range how he went international America how his salon was used for sex in the city it's brilliant so if you haven't listened to that podcast yet please go and have a listen to it uh, you can find it online www.howtocut.it slash ep154 and if you're listening, go and listen on Apple iTunes. I need your ratings and reviews on there, by the way. So go and give us a rating and a review. It helps me really work out the show. So thank you so much. If you're watching this again uh, on repeat, I hope you're enjoying it. If, thank you all for you guys for tuning in. You are really part of this. I'm starting to feel a family coming along from this kind of whole vibe. So until next Monday, you know what I'm going to say? Peace, love and smiles all the way. Now over to TikTok. So my client comes in and she wants her hair really, really white, but she is so damn gold near the root area. So I decided to go in with some foil. I used Osmo Elevation Bleach and 6% and put foils in. And then I put some more foils in. And you can see from my face that it takes a long ass time to put all these foils in, but it was gonna be worth it. So I kept going and finally got everything in and let it develop and then washed it off and I crapped my pants because the root was really bright orange and the ends were green. Uh, so yeah, I panicked and then put a toner on and yes, it went super, super white. So I took some videos for TikTok and some photos for Instagram and then decided, hmm, this would look super cute curly. So then I killed my client hair and I was so right, it looked super cute. Uh, so yes, that is my client's transformation that I did. This is how you make a visor at home. First use the laminating pouches and put through the laminator. Then cut the face shape out with scissors. Use a hole punch to punch two holes at the top of the mask. Then use clips and elastic to fix to your head. Be safe everyone.